You know what happened. It was one of the highlights of the weekend. Without further ado, let's say hello once again to the Italian gangster, one Danny Sabatello. Danny, my man, how are you? Doing great, bro. How you doing? I'm doing great. And I just want to let you know, uh, no fines here. You can say whatever you want. Uh, we, we, yes. <laughs> we, did you really get fined? Yeah, I don't know yet. My manager is clearing all that up. I'll find out later today. But I was told during fight week um, that my mouth and my actions could get me in a little bit of trouble. I had security following me the entire fucking week. Um, and even before those face-offs, you had all the fighters kind of next to each other. And you had a bunch of security guards separating me and Higo. So they were just kind of reiterate, don't do anything dumb. Um, and then after that fight, when I was flicking off the crowd and uh, swearing and doing all that shit, some guy came up to me and said that I'm going to be fine. So I hope I'm not fucking fine, but I don't know yet. Worth it. I mean, it was a great promo afterwards, right? Yeah, totally worth it. Just because that's that's who I am. You know, you could find me. Um, I mean, unless it's like a fucking big ass fine, then fuck no, it's not worth it. But yeah. I don't think it'll be that big. Um, but you know what? We're in a cage trying to beat the shit out of each other. We could fucking murder each other. If you're going to get mad at me for saying a four letter word, then that's just fucking crazy. Um, I, and again, I don't really care too much about the money. You could find me, whatever. I don't give a shit. I'm always going to be me. Yeah, I agree. Also, you're on Showtime. It's not like you're on like, you know. Fox or ABC or something like that. So they need to lighten up a little bit. Now, congratulations on the win. Uh, could I ask you, because of everything that you said leading into the fight and the predictions and all that, ultimately, are you happy with the win, with the performance? I'm happy with fucking everything. I dominated him on the entire fight except for that second round, but I'm actually happy that that happened because that was the first time I faced some sort of adversity in that Bellator cage. Um, you know, he goes a fucking animal. That's just the bottom line. That guy's got so many submissions. He's so good on your neck. He had my back for like three and a half minutes and I was able to weather that storm. You know, that was the only slip up in the fight, but that's some good, much needed experience that I went through. Um, and then you saw my face and everything after that second round, get up. I was so fucking happy. I was like, okay, it's one to one. I went through that. Now I'm just going to fucking break that guy. I think I did. I think I did break him not getting finished in that second round. I think he got up and was like, fuck, that was my opportunity. Now he's going to absolutely come for me. And you know, these fucking idiots online that don't understand MMA might say it's fucking boring and all that shit. But you know what's boring, Ariel? Is domination. Domination is boring. If you watch a football game and it's 56-0, of course it's fucking boring. So yeah, that fight is boring because I'm dominating this motherfucker. What do you want from me? Are you going to be mad at me for being so good? How about you guys get fucking better so it won't be boring, so we can have these scrambles, we can have these exchanges. I'm punching you in the face. You're punching me in the face. We're going for submissions. That doesn't happen because I'm dominating these motherfuckers. I think the true fans that understand MMA actually get how fucking good I am, understand the entertainment. They appreciate what I'm doing in that cage. But there's so many fucking idiots in MMA that are like, oh, this guy's fucking boring. He's just dominating the guy. What do you want from me? You guys go get fucking better so it's not boring. Did the booze bother you at all? Like in the middle of the fight, here you are dominating this guy. Like it didn't get under your skin, rattle you, anything like that. I love the booze. I always say, you know what? I either want people going crazy for me or I want them to boo me. And it's funny because when I was walking into that cage, I got less cheers before the match than Higo did. They were cheering for Higo from the get go. Wow. So in the back of my mind, I was already like, you know what? Fuck this crowd. They're idiots. They're going to be against me. So I kind of just played the part after that second round. When I got up, I started flicking off the crowd and they saw that they were getting mad. They started booing. So then I just fucking pumped up the crowd and had me booed even more. Um, yeah, I, I fucking love the booze. That crowd is fucking idiots. Um, I know so many people are going to hate me. More people are going to hate me than love me, but it's obviously exciting for my fans that are fans of me because they could just tell everyone to go fuck themselves because we just keep winning. Um, but yeah, I, I love the booze, man. Those booze were piercing. I don't know how many people were in the crowd, but it was going nuts. They hated me. Um, but that's just what I love. You know, I love that excitement. I think it's fun for fucking everybody. And, uh, and it's not fake, you know, it's so funny because those motherfuckers, I swear to God, 95% of that arena was booing me. And right when I walked out, after the fight and the interviews and everything, and I'm on the casino floor, I was bombarded with people wanting pictures, autographs, everyone saying, fuck the crowd. We were cheering for you. Yeah, it's yeah. like, oh yeah, okay, motherfucker. <laughs> but yeah, I, I love the booze. See, that's interesting. I thought maybe leading up to the fight, you would be cheered because you were one of the biggest names on the card and you did a great job of selling your fight, but you're saying you were actually booed. So people weren't buying what you were selling. Yeah, I don't know what the deal was. And that dude's from Brazil. So if these guys are going to cheer for a Brazilian over an American, 
you know, fuck you guys. You know, I don't give a shit. Um, I was kind of a little bit surprised. They already hated me before the fight. <laughs> um, but again, I'll, I'll take that. I'll take the hate. It's kind of sometimes better to be hated than love. You know, at some point, all these guys that are your fans are going to turn on you at some point in your career. So fuck it. You guys can all hate me from the get go and we'll just roll with it. Any part of you upset you didn't finish him later on? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'm always chasing the finish, 100%. But I do always say, I want to go in there and I want to fucking dominate these guys. I want to show that I am just the absolute better fighter. And that's what I did. You know, I fucking won every round except for one. I think there's not one person out there that will say he goes better than me. You know, I think if I were to finish him, maybe in that third or fourth round, people would have say, oh, but it was close. He got that second round and then he slipped up. Now, the good thing was that I fucking did dominate him. These idiots can call it boring, but at the end of the day, I'm fucking very satisfied. I give myself an A because I dominated him. I wish I did get the finish. Um, I probably could open up just a tad bit more on my uh, elbows, but dude, that's a guy that's waiting for me to slip up. I could feel him waiting for me to just make some move so then he could just fucking take full advantage of it in two seconds and then try to get my neck or some type of submission. Um, so a guy like that, you kind of have to be somewhat smart, somewhat careful. Um, and then with this next fight against Stotts, obviously he's a pussy and he has no finishing capabilities. So I can open up a little bit more against him. It can be a lot more exciting fight just because I can free for all. I'm not worried about him finishing me at any point in the fight on the feet, on the ground. Um, it's a very different fight than the Higo fight. Did you know that Stotts was going to come into the cage if you, if you won? I saw him, um, I think it was the day before the fight. So I kind of had an idea that they were going to do that. Um, so I was kind of fucking pumped. You know, I'm actually surprised I didn't punch him in the fucking face once he walked in. Um, they gave us the face off and we were going face to face. And dude, I'm telling you, Ariel, I'm already in this motherfucker's head. We went face to face. I put my middle finger right in his face. My finger was touching his fucking nose for like five seconds and he didn't do shit. I was standing there like, yo, is this motherfucker going to do something? What the hell is going on? Like, do something, bro. Yeah, he's scared, dude. And that crowd, again, is fucking idiots. Yo, he was like, they asked him, what did you think of Sabatello's fight? And he goes, that shit was terrible. And the crowd <laughs> erupted. He said one word. He said terrible. The crowd goes nuts. I'm standing there like, these people are fucking morons. He said one word, but yeah, it, it makes it even better. It's great. You know what? He, everyone can go fucking love him. It's going to even be better when I fucking beat the shit out of him. Before he got on the mic, did you guys say anything to each other in the cage? No, nah, I didn't really see him. Um, I was like doing that post fight interview. Yeah. And then I was high fiving my coach, Mike Brown, um, who had a fucking hell of a weekend. Yeah, tremendous. Um, but yeah. Yeah, I, I didn't fucking see him until we did that uh, that face to face, which was exciting. I wish I fucking can see him every day and fucking get in his head. You know, it's different when you're face to face with someone than it is like virtual. You know, I know we did that virtual press conference with Higo, um, but I'm, I'm glad that I, I got to see that motherfucker face to face. You have any kind of relationship with him? Like uh, the last time when you guys were in Hawaii, this time, and like, uh, you know, no, you ne never crossed paths, nothing. I hate. Let, let me be clear. I hate every single 135-er on the fucking planet. And actually, I hate, unless you're American top team, I kind of fucking hate you. But I especially hate every single 135-er. Um, I saw Patchy Mix when I was walking out of the cage, too. Flicked him off. Magomed off. He's a bitch. You know, I hate all these fucking guys. Um, but, yeah, no relationship with Stotts. I didn't really see him too much in Hawaii. He wasn't on my card. He was, I think, the fight after, maybe, mm -hmm. the, the next day. Uh -huh. um, so I didn't really see him. But they're all little bitches. What do you think of him? I mean, it seems like a great personality. He's on a roll as of late. Uh, he's beating some tough guys, interim champ. Uh, you impressed with him as of late? No, no. I, I like that he does talk shit. Um, and let me be clear, he's not good at it. He does talk trash, absolutely. But he's not fucking good at it. He stutters. You can tell he scripts his shit. Um, and it's just not good. Uh, I, I am very happy that I get to fight him because I know he's going to talk shit to me. And I think it's a... It's a perfect fucking matchup for me. He doesn't really pose any finishing threats. Um, I think his stand-up is average. His ground, which he likes to think he's a ground guy, is average. Um, I think it's a it's a fight where I'm just better everywhere. Um, but I'm very happy that he is going to talk trash because it's just going to make it more fun. You know, a lot of these guys are fucking boring. I think Stotts is a little bit more of a colorful personality, so it will make the fight bigger for sure. But, uh, yeah, I, I think he fucking sucks. I, I, I do see it as me finishing him. 
You know, really? I, I'm not going to say, yeah, I'm not going to say a first round finish. I know he's got some skills, but of course a second round finish. You haven't been impressed with him as of late. No, he was losing against Archuleta before he got that lucky fucking head kick. And it wasn't even a head kick. The knee caught Archuleta's fucking face because he was just a little too close. Yeah. Stotts is not a good fighter. I finish him. I beat the shit out of him. And I'll tell you what, I was thinking going into this, that it's going to be the biggest Bellator bantamweight fight. This might be the biggest fight in Bellator history. Wow. Yeah, I think it's going to be an absolute massive mega fight. Uh, I've actually like almost moments after you guys had your little face off in the, uh, in the cage, I reached out to CJ of Bellator PR and I was like, I want to have both of you in studio to do a face to face. I feel like this could be, this could be tremendous viewing. What do you think of that? Are you down? Uh, I'm fucking in hundred percent. Make sure there's security there or else I might bash that guy's fucking head through that little table you got there. <laughs> I also saw one of your producers or whatever said that my fight was boring. So I okay. do want to fucking pay a visit to that studio. <laughs> Maybe pay that guy a visit and see what he says when I'm in his fucking face. Uh, well, well I actually, I appreciate you watching earlier. Uh, GC, would you like to say anything to Danny? I, no, I, I wasn't watching. Uh, EK clipped it. Ah, uh, you saw it. Was, were you I watching? I was cheering for Sabatello, but uh, yeah. Nah, I, mean, I, can't, I can't hear what he's saying. Oh, you he's can't hear something? him? Nah. He, he's, nah. he was saying that uh, he was cheering for you and don't believe what you see on the on the internet. It wasn't okay, perfect. Fight, then wasn't we're all fight, good. But I then was when I'm in there, him. it's all on stats then. You oh, know wait. What? We actually, had sorry. I don't, I don't mean to interrupt. He did say he was cheering for you, but it was a boring fight. That's what he said. His words, not mine. I just want to let you know. All right. I'll see you soon, GC. <laughs> Line them up. GC and Stotts, both of them against me right in there in the fucking studio. <laughs> I'm in for good. that. Uh, but yeah, absolutely. Have us in there and it'll be fucking great. Oh, that, so, so you really think like they need to, they need to build this up. They need to, is there a place in mind? Is there a venue in mind where you think this should be taking place where it should be like the biggest fight possible, biggest stage possible? What are you thinking? I mean, I wish that it's in Chicago, but it uh, might not be a good idea because my boys will probably just beat the shit out of him before he gets off the fucking plane. Um, <laughs> but I, I don't really care where it is. Obviously I want it in the States. Um, New York would be cool. California would be cool. Down here in South Florida would be epic. Um, again, a dream come true matchup would be Chicago just because I'm from there. And we would sell out. And the place would be absolutely fucking nuts. If we were in the United Center or Allstate, doesn't matter. That would be absolutely nuts. Um, but it will be a big fight. Not just because we both talk trash. Not just because I'm becoming a superstar. But because the high level of MMA. You know, I think I'm the best bantamweight in the world. I think people are starting to realize that, you know, again, you might call my fights boring, but you know, I'm dominating these motherfuckers. So you can't say too much shit. Wait till I lose, which isn't going to happen to talk shit, you know? Um, but yeah, I think absolutely massive fight with uh, all the implications, everything, this million dollar prize is the semis stats is above average, I guess a little bit above average. I'm very elite. Everything going into it. It's, it's going to be an absolute massive fight. Should we petition Scott Coker to make this for the undisputed title? I mean, it's an interim title fight. Uh, does this need to be for the actual belt in your opinion? This is for the belt, Ariel. I don't want to hear shit about Sergio Pettis. You know what? A lot of people don't understand. I wasn't even supposed to be in this tournament. I'm actually very lucky Sergio Pettis is a pussy and backed out of the tournament. Couldn't make it to the battlefield because that's how I got my opportunity in this tournament. Um, so thank you, Sergio, if you're listening out there. Thank you, Sergio, from the bottom of my heart for you being a little bitch. Um, it's really great to get this opportunity now. Um, but so, yeah, Stotts has a belt in my book. Um, as he should, because he's so much better than Pettis. Everyone knows Pettis sucks. I mean, come on. Um, so yeah, this fight will be for the absolute belt. I don't want to hear shit about interim belt. I don't want to hear about any of that nonsense. This fucking fight, Sabatello against Stotts, is for the title. Uh, I'm getting word here from uh, one of our reporters on uh, MMA fighting. I want to pass along the information. It's from Stephen Morocco, who just wrote to me uh, that Mike Mazzulli of the uh, Mohegan Tribe Commission, also head of the ABC, uh, says that uh, you are being fined 5000 but you can appeal it. How do you feel about this? Um, yeah, that's fucking bullshit, dude. <laughs> that's such fucking bullshit. But you know what? I don't care. Um, if I fight there again, I'm telling you right now, I'm going to do the same shit. You can keep fucking finding me. Nothing is going to deter me from being myself. And it's also, it wouldn't do justice for, to the fans. I want the fans to understand exactly who I'm, who they're dealing with. That's who I am. That's my personality. Find me who gives a fuck. It's just money. Anyways. You know what? I always say, everyone's always asking, you know, the million dollars, like all this shit. I don't give a fuck about the million dollars. Do you know how many millionaires there are out there? Dude, there's fat people out there that are millionaires. Anybody can be a millionaire. 
Average people are millionaires. There's only one best batch away in the fucking world, though. And that's what I'm chasing. So, dude, 5K. I mean, at the end of the day, who gives a fuck about 5K? But that is absolutely bullshit. That's some tiggy tack fines. But I agree. Whatever. I agree. What are you gonna do? I personally, can, can I just throw out two suggestions? A, I think Bellator should uh, pick up the tab. Or B, uh, I think we should start a GoFundMe page for you and the, the fans pick up the tab. I mean, I don't think you should pay that. That's absolutely ludicrous. Oh, yeah. Dude, come on. Plus, like, man, again, this is fighting. We were just in the cage for 25 minutes. One of us could have died. One of us could have got paralyzed. Yeah, Our crazy. shirts are off. We're sweating. There's blood, all this shit. And I fucking, I, I, don't, I don't even know. Do you know why? Did he say why I got fined? Was it because I said fuck? Or because oh, I, I flicked know. off the crowd? Or... I, I'm, I'm assuming he, he did not say in this message, maybe he can tell me, but I'm assuming because weren't you told beforehand not to swear? Yeah, but come on, I'm going <laughs> to fucking swear. That's who, I, again, like, dude, you can tell me not to do it. I'm going to be the king of fines in my fucking career. I have a feeling it's bullshit, but you know what? What are you going to do? Whatever. For him. option C, let's tell Dan Lambert to pick up the tab. I mean, I feel like he can afford it if I'm being honest. Dan Lambert will take care of me. He, he's an absolute gangster. Speaking of Dan Lambert, dude, ATT had a fucking weekend. Yes. Uh, Johnny, obviously, you just had yeah. on. He's the American top team. So Mike Brown was in my corner, and then he was in Johnny's fucking title fight after that. That next day, he took a flight at, like, 4 a.m., flew to Vegas, was in Gamrot's corner for that main event. Gamrot won. Yeah, big, big weekend for American top team. But honestly, is anybody surprised? <laughs> no, it was incredible. And Mike Brown is one of the best coaches. The whole the whole squad is on fire right now. So it was great to see. By the way, any idea when this fight will happen, you versus Dots? I can't wait. I hope I like I I hope they don't like make this one of those like like when they did AJ and Pitbull, they waited way too long. Like you gotta capitalize, right? Like this should happen in September, if you ask me, or something like that. What do you think? No, absolutely. I was trying to get word from people. I'm pretty close with those Bellator guys. Um, mm -hmm. Nobody really knows, but they were kind of hinting maybe September or October. It will try. They will try to be before the end of the year. So good. You know what? As it should be. You know what? The steam is rolling and we're both healthy, too. So, you know, again, something with my fights, I don't get fucking hurt, obviously, because I'm so good. I don't get touched that much. Um, so if we're both healthy and we're both fucking chugging along, then why not make this? Dude, I'll fight him tonight. What's he doing tonight? I, I don't give a shit. I'll fucking fight him in an hour. I'll fight him in your studio later today. I'll take a fucking pin right now. But yeah, I hope it's sooner than later. September would be perfect. Um, no idea on location. They haven't dropped that information. I'm hoping they announce something here soon. And, and I do think they will. Oh, that would be tremendous. By the way, I did see some people in the crowd. I don't know if they were friends of yours. They were wearing like the, the blonde hair. So it did seem like you had some fans, Emma, you know, or were they part of your crew? No, they're my crew. Yeah, oh, yeah. Okay, no, right. I, I definitely had some fans there that um, were wearing Sabatello shirts that I didn't know um, because I saw them at the casino floor after um, when I was absolutely plastered. Uh, but I did have like a bunch of my boys and um, a bunch of friends fly out. If you go back and you watch the fight between the rounds, you can like see them and the crowd going fucking nuts. Everybody's booing. And then the crowd will zoom in on a couple of my boys. They had the uh, Italy flag on their back and they're going nuts. Uh, but that's just why it's so fun, just because it's kind of a little bit more fun when you have everybody against you. But you have your set crew of people that can be like, fuck this and just have fun with it. My boys said it was the most fun fight they've ever been to. Everybody was hating on them the whole time booing me but they can just obviously give the middle finger right back and it just made the victory even more sweet by the way how's the uh the after party scene at the uh, mohegan sun what was it like dude that casino i mean it's pretty sick because it's big but it's whack <laughs> they stopped serving alcohol at 2 a.m oh. i was at the blackjack table and i wanted to get like a bunch of uh rounds for me and the fellas and the guy was like oh yeah we're done selling it's 2 a.m i thought he was joking so i started laughing i mean i was like hammered so i was laughing he was serious i wanted to get up and calf kick him dude i was fucking pissed but obviously we went back to the hotel room my, my boys all obviously had booze in their room and we just stayed up all night i haven't really slept too much dude i got sure. back at 8 a.m from the casino this morning um and, and when we got back one of my boys was like you must be starving. You were dieting for a couple months. You just made weight. You fought. I was like, fuck yeah, I'm starving. He gets up, goes to the kitchen, comes back with double shots for everybody. Oh, God. Says, here's your fucking breakfast. Yeah, it was, it was hilarious. And did you uh, did you fly home on Saturday or did you stick around in the in the area? Yep, flew home Saturday morning just because um, I wanted to get back to Fort Lauderdale and party with my boys here. And uh, was that was that nice? Was that fun? 
Yeah. Yeah, dude. South Florida is a trip. It's, it's crazy. Um, I recommend everybody go there. You know, it doesn't matter what age you are. It's just absolutely beautiful. It has everything to offer for everybody. Um, but yeah, it's, it's always so fun. You know what? I got the best people around me. I always say my teammates, my friends, my coaches, my family, my support system is just awesome. And it's just, it's great because I love that everybody can hate me and it's so easy to hate me. So then when people actually are extending a hand and saying they love me and all that shit, it's just so sincere because you know what? The cool thing right now is to hate me. So we'll see who the fucking true MMA fans are that fucking love me. And, and I think it's, it's even more meaningful. Have you been back to the gym yet? No, no, I'm going to stop by there. Maybe tonight. Um, I, I don't know. My, my friends probably won't let me be sober one minute this week. <laughs> So I don't know if, if I'm sober, I'm going to try to go back to the gym, say what's up to everybody. Um, you know, I'm close with all those guys. I, I, a lot of those guys are fucking training. I I'm healthy. So I'd like to go back in and help some guys that have fights coming up. Uh, but, I, but I do want to take a little bit off and, and kind of have some fun. Are you sober right now? <laughs> a little, <laughs> a little bit. Um, I, I tried sobering up, dude. I mean, I'm taking fucking double shots at 8 AM. So Jeez. I am sober ish. I'm going to make this clear, not confusing. Go fuck yourself, okay? I hate you guys too. You boo me, I'll boo you. Go boo me to my face, we'll see what happens. And again, you can boo, you can say it's boring, but you have to appreciate how dominating it is. There's one thing that's not subjectory, and that's how good I am in MMA. I might be on top of these guys just grounding pounding them, and you might think ground pound is boring. Take it up with yourself. That's not my fault. Sorry for being good. I'm dominating. Everybody knows it. Boo me, hate me. I don't give a fuck. I'm the fucking best there is. That's that's plain and simple. And I think people understand that. And finally, a uh, a message, a parting shot, if you will, for one Raytheon Stutz, who you'll be seeing in short order. What do you want to say to him? I know I'm already in his head. I think I'm going to fucking break him in that cage. It's going to be a very, very good showing. Um, I, I do see myself absolutely mauling him. I know that people think he's going to win. I think more people say he's going to win. I might be the underdog finally, so I can make my fans some fucking money. Dude, going back to my last fights, I've been like minus 600. So people are like, dude, we're trying to make money, but we got to always got to parlay you. The good thing is hopefully I'm plus money with this guy. Um, bet the house on me. We'll all get rich. It's going to be fucking great. Rafael Stotts, you're a little bitch. You suck. You're a pussy. I'm going to murder you. I know I'm already in your head. You're a mental midget. You suck. And I can't wait for this fucking fight. Oh, man. Danny, you're, you're a good time, my man. Thank you so much for coming on. Congrats on the win. Uh, you backed up everything that you said. So credit to you. Uh, you have to appreciate. Now, I just want to let the, the record sh state that I, I thought that it was a fantastic fight. It was one of the most entertaining fights that I've seen in quite some time. You have to appreciate Leandro Higo's skill and what he's done, his resume, to appreciate what you did. I appreciate that because I'm one of the smart fans out there. So I want you to know this. And I can't wait to have you in studio with Ray Fionn to do this face-to-face. -face. It's going to be fantastic. Yes, absolutely. Thank you, Ariel. You're the man. All right. Talk to you soon. There he is, the one and only Danny Sabatello, the Italian gangster. What a character.